Welcome back. Once again, I'm your host, Carl Rising, and today we're going to talk about mast cell activation syndrome, uh, which is a video that I'm doing on request, and uh, I, this will be posted on all of the Facebook Candida groups, um, and uh, I, I really hope that you guys enjoy this. Uh, this is it's kind of a underappreciated yet incredibly important component to dealing with candida or other issues that will involve or lend to high toxicity. Uh, so what is mast cell activation syndrome? Um, you know, we're going to do this a nice easy way here. We got to we got to actually have a a view on my screen. We're just going to go through a bunch of different tabs here, and I even got the the bigger mouse cursor there. I feel like a real YouTuber now. Uh, so, what is mast cell activation syndrome? It occurs when the mast cells, which uh, are, you know, release substances into our cells that regulate inflammatory response and different immune responses, even make interferon for viruses if they detect viruses, uh, when they are overactive, um, you know, too, too much, release too much of these substances at the wrong times. And, you know, lots of different candida mycotox, um, and mycotoxins will do that um, and you know candida promotes the production of histamine you know we end up with a histamine intolerance situation um, which you know which by the way uh, cytokines are what are released by our mast cells, which are all throughout our body, um, in the parts of it that are going to be exposed to the in external world a little bit more. So, like our skin, our digestive tract, our respiratory tract. And we're going to get into some stuff later on here about smoking and also about well, respiratory viruses in general, um, <clears throat> especially in light of the current situation. Uh, so, histamine intolerance. You know, if we have tons and tons of histamine in our system, as well as other oxidizing compounds we're going to end up stimulating all our inflammation response a lot um, which you know if we're already dealing with, uh, with with candida inflammation we're going to also just have inflammation just from their toxins um, and you know eventually with histamine overload here like we're going to have um, a depletion of and you know I, I talk about enzymes a lot in a lot of my videos uh, but a depletion of the enzymes that you know that, that help us break down things like histamine anything that we have an overabundance of we will end up having a depletion on the reserves for the enzymes that we use to break it down um, and you know that enzyme is DAO which let me see where does that stand for again ha 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 word soup mighty DAO enzyme the diamine oxidase you know, parse through the word soup of health and you know I just wash my hands I'm at home by myself touch my face all I want go ahead touch your face It'll feel good you're home um, 
It's an enzyme that's responsible for breaking down histamine. Um, you know, another one is so this methylated transferase is uh, N acetyl, which means it's prepared. Uh, methyl, which means it's bound with, with methyl already, which you know we need to bind. We need to methylate everything before we can use it. It's an interesting little thing about molecular biology. Uh, and methyl is very important. Um, uh, transferase. I mean, it's just, you know, just it, that, that's a neurotransmitter. Uh, but, you know, these guys feel here, these guys, you know, this this lady, uh, Dr. Jill, uh, Jill Carnahan, who's an MBA, an ABIHM, or oh, she's, she's got a lot of letters. Uh, and she's got a really good looking article here, so, so I think she's a good person to. Uh, read up on these issues from. I picked a lot of really good sources, I feel. I hope you guys enjoy these. So they're going to all be in the description below. All of the websites that I'm using are going to be in the description below. Um, so, found in the kidneys, and thymus, and pregnant women rises significantly found in placenta. Uh, you got to keep histamine down. You got to keep inflammation responses down in these in these places, uh, especially like the kidneys. We are constantly processing uh, water soluble acidic compounds through our kidneys, uh, and, and our, our thymus is very important for just our our general uh, like immune system function. That's that's right here. That's right behind the breastbone that regulates your immune function. Um, and in, in the placenta, you know, you, you want to keep blood flow going to that baby. Otherwise, it's going to starve. It's kind of uh, like an, an, an extra body part for those nine months. Uh, you know, it's found in the small intestine, in the two sections called the jejunum and the ileum. Uh, when foods high in histamine pass through this part of the small intestine, DAO breaks it down and prevents it from entering the body. When you have sufficient DAO, nearly all, all the histamine that passes through your digestive tract is broken down and therefore doesn't cause issues. But if you don't have enough, it can cause histamine levels to rise. And if this goes on long enough, it can cause his histamine sensitivity, chronic inflammation, or what we're here talking about today, mast cell activation syndrome. Um, which is, you know, just to get back to mast cell for a second. Um, we have two different kinds of immune function. Here we are. Uh, we have our innate, or H1, what we're born with. And then we have our adapted immune function, which is the H2. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, how is this treated? This is the conventional stuff here. If you're interested, um, not my bag. I I like the natural things. Mm. Mm. Sip a little mm. detox tea. Ah, feels good. A ah. little bit of licorice in there too. Give it a little bit of taste. It's good. Um, but, you know, uh, anyway, H2, our adapted immunity, when that gets in a habit, we end up just like with gluten intolerance or other candida sensitivities, which is really, really this. Um, you know, we, we end up with our immune system overreacting to, to things, 
uh, burning itself out, uh, getting low on all its enzymatic resources, and just not being really ready to deal with threats when they really arise, when external threats come in. Uh, as you know, Candida is a parasite. It won't kill you. It'll slowly terraform your body. Uh, you'll die of complications. You'll die of diabetes. You'll die of intestinal issues. You'll die of malnutrition. You'll die of all, all sorts of other things. But, you know, Candida won't kill you directly. Uh, you would have to completely be eaten by it <laughs> for it to kill you directly. Um... Uh, just be one giant pile of psoriasis, which I wish on no one. Uh, but yes, so we have here from uh, Allison Vickery, who is a health coach, uh, by the looks of it here, uh, fungal infections, histamine intolerance, and mast cells. Uh, fungal infections, histamine intolerance, mast cells, crucial connections overlooked as one of the source of histamine intolerance. So that's just what I was just saying. Uh, I mean, this is an overlooked thing. This is an underappreciated problem that goes along with candida and causes a lot of other chronic inflammatory problems in the body. Um, especially in the skin, it can, you know, it can cause problems, I think, in the joints just because our inflammatory response is through the roof and those are right next to our skin. Uh, so it's a pretty pretty local area. Like if, I've, if I have a, a mast cell flaring up, um, releasing a lot of histamine in my elbow skin here, so this little skin I'm pinching here, uh, that could affect my elbow. It doesn't feel good when that kind of thing happens. Um, but, you know, mast cells, you know, they're not the enemy here. Just remember, mast cells designed to identify pathogens. Uh, when they identify pathogens, they trigger an acute inflammatory mediator, which calls more cells into the infected site. Histamine, for instance, increases blood flow in the damaged site and makes the vessels leakier. This leakiness allows the inflammatory mediators access. There they combine forces with free radicals to eat the inflammation and to eat the infection. Now, do you see a connection here? And I'm gonna I'm gonna do a quick search here. Um, mast cell activation syndrome and diabetes I'm sure we're going to get yep mast cells and, and, and novel medication for yeah 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 yep see here right here right here they're they're touting uh stabilizing your mast cells to help with diabetes you know if you have you find that same page I was on before. If you have lots of lots of uh, stuff going on with histamine, mast cells, and and, and releasing dealing utilizing um, free radicals let me find that page again here so many pages open yeah combine forces with free radicals there they combine forces with free radicals if you have lots of free radicals and constant swelling and making leaky damaging, compromising your blood vessels on a consistent basis, that's going to lead to diabetes. That that's just that's going to damage your blood your blood vessels and you're not going to be able to pass sugar out of your blood. And you know, there's a reason why uh antioxidants are pretty much the number one thing for treating diabetes naturally. Um uh, or 
anything that has a natural insulin, of course, um, like like bitter melon. Um, but you know, you have to be, you have to have blood vessels that are healthy enough to allow passage of sugar and other nutrients and 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 waste out of tissues. You know, you get breakdown of of, of tissue in places where the circulation is harder, you know, like the fingers or or the feet. And yes, we're home on quarantine. These are my slippers. Uh, and you know, if you can't get the the different oxidizing compounds that are both being utilized and produced by things like candida or from food additives or environmental toxins out of the affected tissue, it's going to die. It's going to have cancer. It's going to need to be amputated. Something is going to go amiss with that tissue. Um, and they're, 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 they're talking about stabilizing your mast cell uh, activation as a novel medication for obesity and diabetes you know it's another just cut the symptom out treatment instead of looking at the root cause which yeah candida causes histamine intolerance this is from bliss health coaching um these have these guys have a nice little thing here Unexplained itching, migraine, dizziness, histamine intolerance, candida have close ties that can't be ignored. Uh, they can seem very random, hard to pin down. Histamine is an important neurotransmitter and vital f and has vital functions such as dilating blood vessels to help fight infections. We just we just covered that. Uh, after struggling with symptoms of histamine for years, I have noticed a connection between histamine intolerance and candida. Let's take a look at some of the symptoms. Uh, anemic. Uh, you know, I've, I've mentioned in other videos, candida eats your, uh, your, your, uh, your, your iron out from underneath you in your digestive tract. It likes iron. Uh, you know, smells, perfumes, causing migraines, livers backed up, uh, low blood pressure because the blood vessels are dilated all the time, acne because there's inflammation and backup of compounds that need to be flushed from the tissues, muscle wasting. Uh, candida itself produces some mycotoxins that have a degradating effect to uh, muscle tissue. Uh, you know, muscle wasting, if you're not careful, uh, you don't detox right uh, during candida die-off can be a thing. Uh, rapid heartbeat while your body is dealing with all these hyped up inflammatory responses you know fungal infections uh you know because your tissues are acidic from all of these free radicals and all this histamine uh, you know and, you know anxiety because you're on edge with the hist with you with your system up and and your immune system up and you know lack of neurotransmitters because of a candida thing going on in your gut crowding out the bacteria that would make your neurotransmitter precursors uh things like like serotonin <laughs> uh protein in urine you know there's a lot of mast cells in the bladder uh in the bladder in, in the kidneys uh you have an infection in the kidneys you have you have like candida living in the kidneys protein in the urine memory loss because of brain fog and so these are almost like one thing confusion these are like one of these are three things skip the protein and these are all like one one thing uh allergic to many medications livers backed up dizziness uh inflammation in the blood vessels in the head uh hard to regulate body temperature you know, blood vessels are all over the place. Cold sweats, blood vessels are all over the place. Sinus infections, uh, tissues. You see, you see this, this all goes on. A lot of this frequent urination is the, the urinary tract is disturbed. Uh, shortness of breath because the lungs are inflamed. 
uh, arrhythmia because the heart is 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 beating off beat because the blood vessels are overly dilated. Uh, I all the lo loss of appetite because of inflammation in the digestive tract uh, and and the liver not wanting to deal with anything else at the moment and the the the, blood, the kidneys either. Um, you know, tissue swelling, hive. I, I've dealt with this stuff a lot myself. I hate getting out of the shower and seeing hives after dealing with hot water, the chlorine in the, in the water in the shower, and the compounds in my own system. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's annoying. It's, it's gotten a lot better. Uh, these are process. All of this is a process, guys. Uh, takes time, takes work, takes diligence, but fix this. It's just moving stuff out of the body that shouldn't be there. And when you're dealing with toxins, it's a lot easier. Um, I mean, killing the candida is its own thing. Detoxing is separate, but there's a feedback loop where if you keep your tissues toxic and acidic, it's still a great environment for candida, so second you feed them again they grow back up which I had a request for a video about uh, what happens when you fall off the wagon with the diet that'll be probably my next video we'll get back to these videos on uh, on different antifungal supplements and herbs and foods uh, eventually but you know I have some requests to take care of first um, so Yep, many reasons. Fungus, one of the main culprits. Candida grows, multiplies in the gut, and create and release histamine and inflammation. It also decreases the body's ability to break down histamine, which we already covered. Uh, mycotoxins, yep, mycotoxins. Uh, they even makes alcohol, which, you know, alcohol uh, will trigger histamine. Yeah, uh, so these problems go hand in hand, um, and you know, it just takes work, takes diligence. But you know, reduce your candida levels, you will have better issues with or better situations with your histamine levels, especially uh, over time. You can speed this up by detoxing, but um, you know. So you, you, eventually, though, you wanna you wanna not live on the Benadryl forever. Um, eliminate everything in your environment that causes you reactions. So you know, like switch to cleaner cleaning products. You know, get rid of like toxic um, uh, body care products. Switch to something healthier. Um, yeah, um, here, here we have, once again, fungal infections, histamine tolerance, and mast cells. Um, we're going to go down also to, uh, viral infections. When it comes to viral infections, process is very similar. Activated by viruses via specific cell surface receptor which triggers the release of mediators many interferon which i mentioned earlier uh, that elicit an antiviral immune response however there is evidence that mast cells can be harmful in viral infections one study showed that in response to respiratory virus mast cells could exacerbate or lead to the development of asthma you know if your bronchioles are getting really tight and you're getting a lot of chronic inflammation, which leads to scar tissue, which leads to chronic inflammation, which leads to scar tissue. Yeah, asthma. Asthma might be right down the road uh, if you don't get on top of that with some enzymes and maybe some good natural bronchiodilators that won't mess up your liver. Um, and, and without having to rely on histamine to do this for us. Uh, to release, well, 
well, that's for more basal dilating. But um, like things like Boswellia, really good for opening up the bronchioles. Uh, Ginkgo biloba, even better. And also opens up the blood vessels in the head, which helps with headaches um, from these symptoms, which is really nice. Um, I, better brain, uh, better blood flow to the brain in general, so a little less brain fog from, uh, you know, the brain fog is often with liver, with, with toxic uh, backup in the liver, but, you know, compromised circulation in the head will do that too. It's all about supply chain with, with a lot of different things in the body. So wherever you break the supply chain, you know, clean, healthy blood, clean, healthy blood, either, 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 lungs, same, oxygenated blood. Uh, it, it's uh, in the gastrointestinal tract, well as the skin, have the highest amounts of mast cells in a normal state. During an infection, the number of mast cells will rapidly increase in the gut. So there's a lot here. So here we go. Here we go with all these different inflammatory bowel diseases. Um, you know, cut your histamine, cut your candida, uh, fix your gut. As the mast cells increase and interact with the pathogens, they release more inflammatory mediators, including histamine, uh, which will hurt the uh, the structural integrity of your uh, capillaries uh, and, and veins in your intestinal uh, lining um, which is going to uh, lead towards things like leaky gut uh, lead towards just a general degradation of that which will lead to general degradation to other parts of your body and also let your immune system fully aside from mast cells your t cells you know your killer cells your white blood cells into your intestinal lining where they're not supposed to be like like past it into the actual cavity of the uh, of the intestine more inflammation uh, autoimmune stuff happening now uh, see how this progresses uh, right, we, we have candida overgrowth histamine production compromised uh, blood vessels and lining and then we have leaky gut we have autoimmune problems from either candida getting out into other tissues causing an autoimmune inflammation response as well as releasing more toxins and stimulating more mast cells in other parts of the body uh, but the immune system getting in and causing inflammatory issues in the gut um, which will just run you ragged uh, you know, candida and food allergies if your gut is colonized by candida you become sensitive to food antigens uh, because the decreased number increased number of mast cells and hyperpermeability of the gastrointestinal mucosa uh, you know, as well as being low on enzymes that break things down. Um, I, they recommend testing for pathogens. Not a bad idea. You can always assume pathogens are there and just do the cleanest thing you can. Yeah. Have a sip of this tea here. Mm. It's cold, but it's nice. Yes. I already talked about respiratory stuff, but you know, we have a whole page here talking about coronavirus and mast cell. Um, you know, branches of the immune system, that's that H1 and that H2, the innate that you're born with, um, like reactions and the adapted reactions. Uh, the current state in, re in res regards to the H2 uh, of the immune system, inflammatory response in someone with histamine intolerance, mass cell activation syndrome. Yeah, this is the release of inflammatory cytokines, which are little protein bits, they're, they're signalers. Um, 
induced by both histamine intolerance and COVID-19. Like, uh, oh, here's what I was looking for earlier that cleanly defines what I just said. <laughs> the innate and the acquired immune response. Um, so yeah. Um, so what can we do about this? Aside from detoxing, aside from killing candida, what else can we do? Um, we can stop putting things into our body that straight up uh, contain or elicit uh, the production of histamine. Uh, so which foods are high in histamine? This is from Medical News Today, which of course... And this is going to be all this is going to say COVID-19 like 18,000 times on in my video because uh, everyone's got a banner um, histamine intolerance occurs build up from the drugs medications environment nutritional deficiencies and diet can lead to histamine yeah everything I was just saying here um, factors that lead the Factors that lead to histamine intolerance cause the following increase in how much histamine person that is releases, an increase in the effectiveness or abundance of the diamine oxidase or DAO, the primary enzyme that breaks down di in, well, ingested histamine. And, you know, like I said, finite resources. Uh, decrease in the effectiveness or abundant, uh, abundance of the other enzyme, uh, this methyltransferase, uh, or, or HNMT, uh, an enzyme that helps break down histamine within the cells. So this is in the gut, DO is in the gut, and uh, this uh, histamine and methyltransferase is produced within the cells. Um, you see it's fairly rare impacting 1% of the population uh, people often mistake it for other conditions such as food allergies and gastrointestinal diseases so this is um, here. this is probably one of the most important lines here for anyone dealing with candida issues um, you know smaller amount of the population but I would guess that a good amount of the people who are dealing with severe candida issues are also dealing with this. So most of you who would be looking this up based on candida or seeing this from the candida group. Uh, so causes, yeah, many foods contain it. Um, let's see. Common factors that interfere with levels of your important enzymes for histamine are prescription drugs, for example, uh, airway medications <clears throat> such as this uh, theophenylene, uh, the heart medications, antibiotics. They just wreak havoc on your gut and destroy all your guys that keep candida down. Antidepressants, because they suck in, they suck serotonin up out of your gut to your brain, which takes away from inflam inflammation mediation. Antipsychotics, same deal. Diuretics, we're going to just constantly uh, dilate things in the urinary tract. Muscle relaxants, because they're going to mess with... with, with uh, I function of things in, in your tissues and your muscles there pain medications just toxic things gastrointestinal medications nausea and gastroesophageal reflux disease GERD medications because uh, they throw off your intestinal pH before they even do anything else uh, malaria drugs tuberculosis, uh, tuberculosis medications so like respiratory things and, and things that have to do with, um, with, with blood vessels in the head and the digestive tract. Um, right, pain, a lot of these NSAID painkillers, you know, your synthetic aspirins, not your classic white willow bark aspirin, um, but, or was it white willow or white oak? Either one. Um, they're, they're almost the same. Very helpful. Um, uh, you know, Proxim, 
all, all these different NSAIDs here, uh, you know, alcohol, intestinal conditions or injuries that compromise gut lining or affect digestion, liver conditions, all of this is repeating, repeating, repeating. But we're going to paint a picture here, and, and, and no matter how many times we have to color in the same pixels in the picture as we go through these pages. Uh, being deficient in vitamin B6, C, copper, or zinc, which, you know, if you're deficient in those, you probably have a, a candida issue. Uh, extreme or toxic stress, you know, talked about stress and its effect on our... Uh, our, our digestive bacteria, our intestinal bacteria, low oxygen states, candida eats our iron. Uh, injury or trauma, you know, cortisol affecting intestinal bacteria populations and ratios. Temperature extremes throwing our system off. Um, so, symptoms, diarrhea, chronic headache, flushing, especially the heart and chest. You know, lots of open blood vessels, um, irritable bowel, lots of swelling in there, congested, runny, itchy nose, uh, red, itchy, watery eyes, sneezing, shortness of breath, hives or red, raised, itchy, burning bumps, very itchy skin, unexplained anxiety, stomach cramps, pain, chronic constipation, nausea, vomiting, gas and bloating, unexplained exhaustion, dizziness, very dry, patchy, or scaly skin, otherwise referred to as eczema, irregular and increased heart rate, severe menstrual pain, you know, less common, low blood pressure, sleep problems, uh, you know, due to neurotransmitter issues, uh, and uh, issues probably with blood flow to the brain. Uh, swelling around the lips, eyes, occasionally th the throat, tremors, and, you know, passing out a lot, loss of consciousness. Um, I, you know, we make histamine from histidine. Uh, you know, it's a non-essential amino acid, you know. It's a semi-essential amino acid. They say children should get it from food. Needed in humans for growth and tissue repair. Important for the maintenance of myelin sheaths. And so histamine and its precursor, hist uh, histidine, have some important roles to play. It's just whether or not things are, you know, overreacting in the system. Um, let's see... So, one thing we can do is avoid foods, too. Not just uh, a lot of medications that cause um, high histamine production, but, you know, avoid foods that are high in histidine in the first place. Um, pork chops, very very high in histamine. Uh, pigs don't sweat. I said this before, pigs don't sweat. Um, so you're really not gonna have a piece of meat that's low on fat soluble toxins, you I mean, water soluble toxins. Uh, beef, though, uh, you know, beef is healing for a, uh, um, for, for a typos in intestinal tract, but uh, you know, everything in moderation. Uh, so lean chicken breast, tuna. This might have something to do though with a lot of this. Just like how pork is number one uh, with the quality of our conventional meats. Um, how healthy. If it's firm tuna. Uh, canned navy beans, milk. Seeds can be a little high in it sometimes. Uh, whole wheat pasta, eggs. Um, and we got we got the master list of low histamine foods to eat and what to enjoy, like what to what what to have instead, uh, or what what to avoid. I mean to say. Uh, so. 
scrolling past benefits, intolerance symptoms, all that. Uh, do, 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 do. Lists. Make this a little easier to read, maybe. There we go, guys. Now you can read it, I'm sure. Even on your smartphones. Um, so, as far as vegetables, fresh, except those listed on the opposite. Uh, eggplant, pumpkin, which you know, eggplant's a nightshade anyway. And it's probably the amount of histidine that's in it. That, 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 that's the big thing. Tomato as well. Yep. Um, surprise peppers and eggplants. I mean, peppers and uh, potatoes aren't on here. Olives, pickled things, vegetables. You know, if you're going to to eat these, you know, eat them in moderation. Uh, let's see, apples are low. You know, apple a day. You know, all that old saying. Uh, rhubarb, cantaloupe, lychee, figs, uh, permacin. Uh, persimmon, I can never say that right. Persimmon, grapefruit, blackberries, grapes, blueberries, honeydew, watermelon, mango, coconut, pear. Uh, these these things that are, uh, a lot of these, uh, they're the things that we consider more of like a refreshing thing to eat as for, uh, for fruit. While then we have other citrus fruits here, bananas, cherries, cranberries, currants, dates, loganberry, nectarine, orange, papaya, peach, uh, of course, anything made with these things. Um, strawberries, raspberries, raisins, plums, prunes, and pineapples. Um, I, those are all going to be a lot heavier in a lot of different ways. So there's a lot of a lot of more potential for them to be packed with more of anything, um, including histamine. Um, so say fresh meat and poultry is best, um, bought and, buy and cook it fresh whenever possible, uh, processed stuff is always more of a problem, um, say, say unless it's fresh caught, avoid fish, shellfish will spike inflammation through histidine, um, leftover and refrigerated meats, just have had time for things to break down in them. Cured, processed, smoked meats. Uh, you know, when, when if a protein is entering our system in a less than optimal state, our body might go, "What's that?" and produce histidine or produce histamine full on uh, from the mast cells. Uh, you know, plain eggs, you have a raw egg whites. Um, you know that that can that that might have something to do with uh, the uh, the whole thing about having raw eggs when you're training for strength training and such because you're trying to uh, dilate uh, the blood vessels in the muscles, trying to get more blood flow in them. I don't know, um, but you know raw egg whites. Um, will contain more histamine. Uh, when you cook them, you break it down. Uh, see, fats and oils. Pure butter's good. Vegetable oils. Uh, I still avoid canola. Um, foods which contain no additives. Coconut oil, meat drippings, and fat are good. Um, yeah, meat drippings and fat. Um, homemade gravy. Homemade salad dressing with allowed ingredients. Avoid, you know, fats or oils with colors or preservatives. Prepared gravy, commercial salad dressings. Yes, avoid most of those. Um, look for canola oil or soy oil on your label, and if you see it, put it down. Uh, Hydrolyzed lecithin. It's usually uh, produced from uh, from soy. If you're lucky, it's non-GMO. Most of it isn't. Um, 
spices and herbs. Yes. Except, let's see, anise, cinnamon, clove, curry, powder, paprika, slash cayenne, nutmeg, seasoning packets with the restricted ingredients, and foods that are just ubiquitously labeled with spices. Um, so, you know, nuts and seeds. Cut them out for a couple weeks. Then uh, you can start to slowly include, uh, while making sure that you're avoiding walnuts and cashews, um, things like macadamias and chestnuts that are low histamine. Uh, legumes. Which, what is that asterisk? Scroll down. Are not essential and should be consumed in minimal amounts. Yes, you don't really need a lot of carbs. Yep, you don't really need a lot of carbs. You don't really need dairy. Um, see, avoiding soy, lentils, beans, peanuts. Um, I mean, even if tolerable, keep it to a maximum of a half a cup which is still a lot, really, really think about it, as long as your portions aren't like this in the first place. <laughs> um, let's see, breads and cereals, they, they're saying a half a cup a day there too, I would keep it lower, uh, especially if you're on a candida diet, which if we're really hitting this hard, yeah, I should be. <laughs> Foods containing oils containing hydrolyzed lecithin, which is usually from soy, BHA, BHT, baking mixes, dry dessert mixes, yeah, all this processed crap. Um, cheese, yogurt, uh, buttermilk, uh, you know, unless the yogurt has been specifically cultured with low histamine probiotics, you know, like bacteria that will break down um, histamine, and that's good. But, uh, I, yeah, if tolerable, bring it back in. Sweeteners, recommended to only use one necessary and in minimal amounts. You know, safe things like honey, molasses, maple syrup, um, pure jams and jellies that don't have any other sugar added, homemade desserts with loud ingredients. Um, avoid flavored syrups, prepared dessert fillings, prepared icings and frosting. So processed foods, again, confectionery, commercial candies, processed sugars, artificial sweeteners, uh, apple cider vinegar, really, really helpful. You all know I love me some apple cider vinegar. Baking soda in small amounts, uh, plain gelatin, cornstarch, uh, gluten-free baking powder all accepted. Avoid a lot of chocolate, cacao, carob, uh, products made with artificial flavors or preservatives, artificial colorings, especially uh, tartazine, which is found in medications and supplements often, to make sure it isn't in yours. Uh, the hydrolyzed lecithin, mentioned three times now, twice for these guys. Flavored gelatin as opposed to the, the plain. Avoid mincemeat. Uh, prepared relishes and olives, soy sauce, miso commercial ketchup, so yeah, soy, uh, canned, canned foods, ready meals, pickled and fermented foods, other types of vinegar, like white, plain old white vinegar, avoid that, um, which feeds candida anyway, most of this is bad for candida problems, uh, yeast and yeast extracts, uh, benzoates, uh, also found in cosmetics, sulfites, nitrates, glutamate, food dyes, uh, beverages. Coffee's fine, apparently. Though coffee, if you have uh, intestinal inflammation, not so much. Uh, I would go with some yerba mate tea, maybe. Um, so still in carbonated mineral water, tea made with fresh sliced ginger, you know, kind of you know, we got to just produce some good bile and clean the gut out. Um, you know, so it helps degrade the histamine by with, with that bile production. Um, no alcohol. 
you know, minimal amounts, if at all. Um, but if necessary, especially if you're dealing with alcohol withdrawal, I'm going to give you that. It's a caveat here. Um, when necessary, plain vodka, gin, white rum, best choices. They're going to upset the system the least. Um, uh, definitely avoid soda, carbonated drinks, um, you know, oh, mate. They say yerba mate. Oh. So maybe instead of, uh, just, just don't do either. Um, let's see. All drinks with flavor or spices, beer, cider, and wine. Um, unless it's low histamine, unless it says on it low histamine. Remember, raisins were on the list up there. Uh, avoid all other alcohol as well. Um, so yeah, we already went over DAO deficiency. This is a nice little little site here. A lot of good good visuals here. On a, so you have 20% of patients experience one or two of the associated symptoms. 41.3% of patients experience three to four of these symptoms. 33.8% uh, present more than five. Um, yeah, most most frequent ones are, of course, you know, the migraine, vascular headaches, gastrointestinal disorders, uh, dermatological disorders, uh, soft skin, uh, soft tissue pains, often diagnosed as fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, um, ADHD problems, what, what we call. ADHD. It's a nice little simple thing here. So you want to boost it. You want to boost this DAO and break down these uh, this extra histamine in the gut. Um, You need to incorporate things into your diet that will help. Um, Omega-3 fatty acids, saturated fat, phosphorus, calcium, zinc. I already mentioned zinc earlier. Magnesium, iron, B12, as low as, as well as that B6 from earlier. <clears throat> uh, include you know olive oil was already said is okay. Wild caught salmon was good. Walnuts, yep, yep. Boost, boost, boost. Grass-fed butter, avocado, fresh, uh, fatty fresh fish, pasture-raised chicken eggs, unless it's a sensitivity, but you know normally it's not. Phosphorus, you, know, you get your almonds, your broccoli, your white beans, once again, your pasture-raised chicken eggs. Calcium, you got plenty of good dark leafy green options, broccoli, beans, though avoid a lot of the, the beans. Um, according to that other page there uh, same with the lentils uh, and the almonds even um, you know grass fed meat when you can grass fed or free range um, magnesium you know pumpkin they say avoid pumpkin on the other one uh, but you know test it out as with anything test it um, Oh, iron, good sources of iron here. Avoiding DAO blocking foods if you're having trouble with histamine. The one thing you would avoid is alcohol. They share a metabolic pathway, histamine and alcohol. Um, so, yeah, don't drink. It will block your metabolic pathways for processing histamine. Now, some, some, some good stuff to know here as well would be some important probiotic strains for fixing your DAO levels. So, this lady here 
is her name. I think it's at the bottom. Or well, they're not saying this. Maybe it's 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 a bunch of people. But they're recommending uh, your classic Bifidobacterium infantis, uh, Lactobacillus casseri, Bifidobacterium breve, Bifidobacterium bifidum, which is the real classic Bifido. Uh, Lactobacillus salivaris, Lactobacillus rhamnosus, uh, especially the GG variety. Um, it may help stabilize mast cells. Let me highlight that the pink text there for the hot link. May help stabilize mast cells and reduce the sensitivity of histamine and allergy associated receptors while upregulating anti inflammatory cells. Uh, Bifidobacterium longum, known to be a histamine degrading probiotic, may help reduce the post meal inflammatory response and prevent or improve intestinal hyperpermeability, you know, leaky gut. Uh, so, mast cell activation syndrome is probably a precursor to leaky gut. So, if you have leaky gut, you probably have some undiagnosed mast cell going on. Um, and don't feel like you're in a small club with that. It's a huge club. Um, so, yeah. Lactobacillum lact, I mean, Bifidobacterium lactis helps break down histamine and tyramine. Uh, Lactobacillus planetarum help break down biogenic amine, amines, uh, including histamine and tyramine. So, to avoid though, you want to keep these in lower amounts, taking them in. If you're going to have them, make sure you have a, have a formula that has these above them in the list so you have more of these. Um, Lactobacillus cassi, Lactobacillus bulgaris, uh, bulgaricus, Streptococcus thermophilus, uh, which is at the very bottom of the probiotic list I'm taking right now. Uh, lact though this is really good for respiratory stuff. Um, Lactobacillus, uh, uh, I can't read that one, Del Bruecki, Lactobacillus helveticus, sounds like it should be a, um, a font, not a bacteria, but, uh, you know, additional things that just really, really help balance the system, uh, Lactobacillus riveri, uh, so you know, although many low histamine foods um, put this bacteria strain in histamine producing category, Lactobacillus ruteri is an interesting case. In addition to raising histamine, it's also helpful in raising levels of anti-inflammatory cyclic adenosine monophosphate. I remember phosphorus was important. Um, Saccharomyces boulardii, they just help regulate issues. They, they don't even culture in the body. These guys move through killing candida and dropping off uh, uh, like care packages of complex sugars for your beneficial bacteria. Um, Lactobacillus lactis. Um, Strain is still being debated, but you know that's one to look out for. Uh, Lactobacillus, uh, wait a minute, Lactococcus lactis, uh, used to make some high histamine foods, but some studies found it to be histamine neutral. And of course, most classic, uh, Lactobacillus acidophilus, been heavily studied by professionals in lower doses below 1 billion culture forming units appear to be histamine neutral while reducing inflammation and improving gut health. Um, yeah. So she, she goes on to suggest doing one that has, has uh, really low amounts of streptococcus thermophilus and acidophilus uh, important things to remember here and uh, another thing smoking 
and I say this as as a former cigarette smoker, as a uh, if as anyone who knows me knows, a current organic pipe tobacco smoker. Um, you know, but the, you know the the compounds that are added to the tobacco in cigarettes really gonna upset the system. Uh, so we have the effect of smoking on mass cell density. You know, I'm not even gonna get into all this, but the links will be in there. You know, gingivital bleeding reduction smokers uh, has been associated with decreased blood cell uh, blood vessel density. Uh, you know, once again, another thing with mast cell and diabetes. Um, a stimulates production of chem uh, of chemokines and mast cells, which, you know, signaling proteins. Um, amplifies in inflammatory response and arterial sclerosis progression. Um, yeah, back to this here, um, which I'm going to end up listing this in my, my, my sites as well, since I looked it up while we're, we were working here. But, um, yeah, mast cell activation syndrome, histamine intolerance, histamine overload, uh, DAO, so deficiency, uh, all candida, environmental toxins, but largely candida issues, dietary issues, possibly smoking issues. Um, fixable though, if you just get on top of it. I hope this was uh, as clear as possible with my very rambling and meandering style today. It's been a weird last couple of weeks being home from work but not be looking for a job because I'm on quarantine at home while my uh, place of business is closed for the month. But uh, yeah. In a nutshell, uh, mass cell activation syndrome. Once again, all of these links will be in the description below. Um, feel free to like, share, subscribe for more content and to help me continue making these videos. It would be most appreciated. Right. You guys take care.